Hi, welcome back. Uh, my name's Newman, and this is my life with plants. Today we're going to do a repot of this uh, mm -hmm. Dendrobium yuki daruma. Now the reason why I'm going to do it is we've had some problem with it, and it's not the ideal time of year, but it has to be done. So stay tuned for that. This is not the time of year to be doing this, but um, I had a whole new cane that was growing on this dendrobium and it rotted. And this is a gift from a friend. <coughs> she grows lots of plants, and I get a lot of plants from her, and I buy her supplies in exchange for her gifts. But I'm sure it's not, she didn't do anything wrong, it's just sometimes you have problems, right? <coughs> and um, this is potted in sphagnum moss. We've had a really humid, very hot summer. And because of that, the plants have had a tough time. They've had to work hard to survive this summer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this um, <coughs> clear pot. It's very light, it's just plastic, but uh, <coughs> I'll be putting it into this pot so it doesn't lose balance. And we got some crock which will help to um, keep the weight in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the sphagnum moss off and I'm going to put it into a very well draining soil which will be a cymbidium mix well so I'd say so let's just get that here it's not really you can call it cymbidium mix but who knows we'll let you have a look at this right now here you go. You kind of see it, it's um, cocoa, husks, and pumice. So it's very free draining. If anything, it won't rot and it won't <coughs> go downhill after doing this. And um, yeah, it should be fine. With any luck, it'll get some new offsets, produce a few new roots, and it might have the energy to flower. Because, you know, the dendrobium is a tough. Okay, so we had a stem that um, rotted, which is such a shame. I treated that area with um, hydrogen peroxide. Just to stop it spreading. Oh yeah. You can see it's, it hasn't got much of a root system at all. So what she's done is she's um, she's taken an offset and she's potted it on, right? Uh, so you could say that it's over potted. You got some dead roots there. I really wanted to save this mix here, but. Um, be able to okay I see what's going on now it doesn't have much of a root system to begin with even though it, a piece of it died it's a healthy plan she's only just um, taking a division off because it's got no roots that have actually started to grow yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it outside. <coughs> Got my hydrogen peroxide here. 
I know I'm always saying hydrogen peroxide or blah blah blah. Well, you know what? To tell you the truth, it's saved a lot of my phalaenopsis from death. They've had a white fungus outburst in the root system, a lot of older rescue plants, and I didn't use hydrogen peroxide the first time, and I cleaned all the roots with water properly, repotted it, the fungus took over and killed the whole thing in a, no matter, in a matter of a few days. So the hydrogen peroxide, it destroys a lot of fungus and bacteria <coughs> and helps treat the wound, which gives the plant a chance to recover. Kind of like if you get a wound and you put it on, right? Without it, you probably get all fested. And that's just basically what it's doing. Because let's not forget, you know, we're planting our plants into a potting medium that has even more bacteria in it and stuff. So you, you don't do it all the time. This is just the main area that you focus on is the root ball, right? For the hydrogen peroxide. The mix itself will, will have its own beneficial bacteria and stuff. And eventually the plant after it's had a chance to recover and grow new roots, it'll be on its way. Okay, so... Looking at this... I... would say that it's healthy. Yep. It's a shame it lost that part. Yeah, I'll give you a nice close look. You can see here that this was the side that it was against the pot, and you can see where it's being cut. It's taking a cutting, see? These canes have no roots on them. And we've got a bunch of roots at the back here. So, that's still connected, so it's going to possibly flower because it's still connected to the main plant and it has a root system. Well, to encourage new roots, we're going <coughs> to give it a bit of a trim. I think that would be the right thing to do. And um, this part is not too big at all. It should be fine. I'm going to wrap a little bit of this remaining um, sphagnum moss. I'm going to try my best just to wrap it around a little bit. The rest of it will be that free draining mix. Before we start, we must... Sterilize. You know what this is? Yep. It's a lighter. They sell them at the convenience stores. A lighter. So that's kind of like a Bunsen burner, isn't it? That flame on it. Look at the flame coming off that thing. Look at that. Looks like a Bunsen burner. Okay. So I'm going to trim these in the hope that this will stimulate a bit of growth. It will get, you know, the message that it can grow some new roots. Mm. Hopefully. <clears throat> Not forgetting that these are older canes, and uh, they're probably not gonna. Well, I'm hoping that they can produce a few roots. That's what I hope. So these roots are not really dead, so why 
trim any more off. <clears throat> okay. I'm just going to get all these um, supports off. I'll put them all back when I get back inside. Okay. I'll keep this one indoors so I won't be going outdoors with the other collection. The other, the other part of my collection is healthy. Um, I'm putting it, I'm going to try it, try them outside for a winter. We're going to get really cold out there. I don't know if I said this before, but it will get down to minus five in February we get nice sunny days just about every other day is sunny we get very few cloudy days in, in the winter you could more or less say that it's six to seven days a week however <clears throat> during the night the temperatures can plummet down and I have a vinyl greenhouse out there and I put bubble wrap around it. The neighbor also has a dendrobium that's been growing in a tree, she says, for more than seven years, seven or eight years or longer. And that thing is fine. It's been growing out there for all that time, and it produces new growths, which I want to go out and document it get some more information about it. I want to see how much it's grown this year. From the balcony, when I look down at the tree that it's growing under, or on, it's actually grown, it's mounted to the tree. Uh, we all know that when you plant stuff under a tree, yes, this thing is so knotted on there. When you plant under trees, the um, gosh, what happened here? It's so knotted. Yeah, when you plant underneath trees, um, they actually, because it's green, right, and they give off warmth, they actually protect orchids from frost. So if you have cymbidiums and you get quite cold temperatures and you have a big old tree and you can hang them in it, just do a quick makeshift hanger, hang them underneath your tree, they should be fine in the winter. That's minus 7, so that's about 17, 15 to 17 Fahrenheit, but remembering that the Daytime is sunny, bright and sunny. Right. We are ready to go out and give it a clean and then come back. So it won't be a minute. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> you can see here. A nice root system. You can still hear the fizzing and the popping of the hydrogen peroxide. Focus on this. Trying. Trying to focus. Here we go. You can see that, that <clears throat> those two canes are still attached to the main plant. It has the good root system. Okay. 
I took all those canes, the stakes off, and I just put one. And I tied the um, twist tie to it. <clears throat> we have one amazing leaf left, and that's it. That's left to support this thing. I've got lots of strands of Sorry, I was looking at the camera then. I thought it turned off. <clears throat> I got lots of I made lots of strands of this um, sphagnum moss. And I'm gonna wrap it around. Put some underneath there. And I'm gonna try to wrap this a little bit around it. So I don't want it to dry out totally, but then again I want the nice airy mix. Because obviously it doesn't like that big pot. And um Another point is um, it might have been divided during the summertime <clears throat> with those extremely high temperatures we had, which wouldn't be a good idea at all. You want to do that in the spring, but definitely don't divide during the summertime. It's just too hot, far too hot. Okay, so I wrapped this sphagnum moss around it. There we go. So that when I water it, it doesn't dry out too, too much. And I'm going to put it into here. So we have the, let me change this angle for you. You can see what's going on. Here, hmm? it's hard to get a good angle. Maybe up here. Let's try up here. Okay, uh, I think I found my spot. Sorry about that. The camera turned off. I was messing about there. You need to go. Got the nice free draining pumice mix in there. Pull it up around the edges. Now, what did I choose the clear plastic pot? So, I want to see what's going on in there. I want to make sure that um, I get some nice new growth. The roots are doing fine. That's what I'm looking, looking for mainly. Hoping that they're broken terracotta pot. And the bottom will just stop it from tipping over. <clears throat> Being a dendrobium, you don't need to pot it into such a big pot. that and the first they like to dry out not totally but they like to dry out a little between waterings and I'll tell you that one thing is that um, during the summer times here 
even though that <clears throat> I live in Japan, summer gets very, very hot and a little bit challenged to learn how to keep our plants cooler. But one thing, you can just get them straight out of any direct sunlight. And if you have trees, hang them under your trees. Um, find somewhere shaded, put shade cloth around, try to keep it in a very ventilated area. Um, you don't want to completely stop watering, even though it's super hot, you want to still keep them slightly moist, aerated, keep up their feed. Yep, because they're losing vital minerals in the heat. And a lot of my dendrobiums actually shrivel a lot in the canes. <coughs> they only start to um, do their best growth from winter onwards, or autumn. They will start putting out new canes and they will flower. So they're in a mad hurry now, trying to rejuvenate themselves and get growing. Okay, this is Dendrobium Yuki Daruma King. And this one is, you could call it a, a large growing Dendrobium. So you're looking at canes that can get up to half a meter. Big, massive plant, huge blooms. Beautiful white with brown center. It's quite unusual. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is because this thing is the crock. The crock on the bottom has actually helped it. It's staying up pretty well. But I want to put it into this pot for stability. This one right here. I'm just going to slip in there, I hope. I just have to take it out carefully every time I try to check on it. The ideal stuff for um, keikis is strands of moist sphagnum moss and you wrap them all around it around and around until it's a nice bowl and then you shove the bowl with the keiki all matted together into a terracotta pot and you don't need any stakes at all it just stays up okay i think that does it so look at the final product but one leaf left look one. Such a bummer. Disappointment, such a loss to lose that new stem. And it was such a beautiful big new growth that it come off it. <clears throat> but you know what? It'll be saved. So something to look forward to is when it starts to grow again. I'm not going to water this too much. I'm just going to keep it very slightly moist. Just a little. And that's it for today. And before I go, I'll show you one more thing. Ah, might as well. Something flowered for me. This Cattleya. It's got this soft, soft pink. With a nice dark, intense labellum there. flowers in a cluster and does it have fragrance we don't know yet because it's kind of rainy today this still has a lot of buds to go this is a very robust <coughs> growing one there's nice thick leaves super long growth as you can see there 
Another one that I was hoping I'd get flowers from is my Cattleya uh, Blue Heaven. Although I spy with my eye something in there. Now, what do you think? Does that look like it could be a flower? Might be. They all flower different. Some of them have a big... Um, like a pod, you know. They have like a big pod. Like another stem that grows off it, right? And you just know that that's a flower. It's kind of, well, that's part of the, the stem. What I'm trying to say is that you can, you can tell by the way it's pushing out to the side down at this node here and then you get that big spathe that holds the flowers this one I'm not very sure about that could be the beginning of a flower but I'm not pushing it because it got repotted but check out that root system pretty nice huh Gave it some water yesterday. The funny thing is, is that um, a lot of my cattleyas actually grow their best during the cooler seasons. <clears throat> it probably tells you how hot it is out there. But they, they do have their growth spurts, but I notice that autumn and some periods during the early spring they actually have the biggest out outbursts of growth. They tend to get a little bit um, dormant when it gets very hot. Anyway, that's this rescue. You could call it a rescue. And um, let's just see how that goes. Hopefully it'll the orchid will pull through and we'll have some good results there. Anyway, thanks for watching and remember uh, taking care of your plants isn't a chore, it's part of your self care. It helps you to relax, it, um, it uh, gives you good vibes, it's good for you, good medicine. <clears throat> Okay, if you have any questions, you can ask me anytime, and why not just have a look at this big pothos here, while we're in here, those leaves are as big as my face, imagine if I come over here, see, look, it's as big as my head. Just thought I'd show you that before I go off. He's going to be the lucky one that gets that nice big cutting off the top. So they can grow their own. Okay, and that's all. Thanks for watching again, and see you next time. Bye.